Hi friends, welcome to the Inspired Knitting Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby, and I am coming to you from Southern New Brunswick, Canada. Today is Tuesday? Wednesday? I know it's April the 9th. I think it's Wednesday. Okay, we'll just go with that. I think it's Wednesday, April the 9th, 2024, and this is episode 104. I'm a little rusty, guys. It's been over a month since we had last chatted, so please forgive me. Um, I did bring some trusty show notes with me today. That way I am not such a bad, bad podcaster, but yeah, welcome. <laughs> Um, you can find me on the interwebs as Inspired Knitting Podcast on Instagram. That is where I'm most active. And you can also find me on Ravelry as X Country Girl 1986X. Um, so yeah, I always leave detailed description notes down below. I say this all the time, but just in case you're a new viewer, I always link you directly to the uh, makers that I talk about, whether it is a pattern designer or if it's um, a project bag or stitch markers, I always link you directly to the makers. My Ravelry is just um, it's not very informational to be quite honest. It's kind of just my portfolio to look back upon and know what I have done. So yeah. So how have you guys been? It has been a while. Life has been uh, good. I just kind of lost my knitting mojo a little bit. Um, I guess you could say the winter blues life stuff. Um, I kind of injured myself. I didn't really fall, but I kind of had a slip. Um, I was transferring and I drove my thumb right into my transfer board. So that kind of waylaid knitting and crocheting because I, I push with my thumb. Maybe I'm being a baby about it, but it really hurt. So that kind of put me on the, the back burner for a while with knitting. So that's why I haven't been around, but I am so glad to be back. I have got my knitting mojo back. I will show you kind of what kicked that off in finished objects. But yeah, it's so good to be back. Um, I kind of got a tan going on because spring has definitely sprung here in New Brunswick. Uh, it's kind of been up and down. We did have like three or four days of rain, but the sunny weather is back for at least a couple days and I have definitely been out enjoying it. If you have been a long time viewer, I am a sun goddess. I love the sun. I just like taking my coffee and my knitting outside and just mellowing out. It's the best. So yeah, that's life stuff. Um, I'm going to get on with it because I do have a little bit to show you guys. I have some finished objects today. I have works in progress and yeah, that's about it. I've been a good girl. I haven't uh, bought any yarn so far this month, so I am really proud of that. And I will also update, um, probably after I'm done the knitting content, I will update uh, my yardage for the month of March. I'm doing the grams in and grams out thing. So I will leave that to um, after works in progress, just in case that's something you're not interested in. So yeah, grab your beverage of choice, grab your knitting or your crochet and come chat with me. Today i am got my coffee here in a beautiful mug that I had picked up from Winners. I love Winners, it is the best. I always go straight to the mug section because I might have a slight mug obsession, obsession but I don't care. Um, first cup of the day. So again, forgive me if I tend to mess things up or not speak properly. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to rearrange so I don't spill my coffee because that would be a disaster. Okay. So I guess I will start off with what I am wearing. Uh, since, it, since it is a mild spring day, I decided to bring out my, um, oh goodness, cozy hug? No, that doesn't sound right. This is a Cozy Up Knits uh, pattern. Can't believe I am blanking on the name of it. There's a brioche version as well that I also knit and I love. 
but it is a stripey uh, cardigan. Yes, I still have some tails that I need to trim. I just haven't done it. <laughs> but I've had this one done for at least two years now, and it is definitely a spring and fall favorite. It is knit with two strands, a fingering weight held double, or you could do a DK. And it is just a simple, beautiful cardigan. I did, it does come with um, the elbow length sleeves. And this, um, as you're knitting it, it's knit back and forth. And as you're knitting it, your shoulder would come down to here. So when you go to pick up your sleeve, you're literally just doing, I think it was three, something like three inches of ribbing and your sleeve is done. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, you can check out my Ravelry page because I'm pretty sure I put all the uh, yarns. I believe this one is uh, Polka Dot Creek, uh, Lilac Fields, I think. This one, um, this was not an indie dyed yarn. This is actually a DK yarn and I'm blanking on it. This was two years ago. The black I think is just Cascade and I used... Um, I used a DK weight uh, for the cascade, just holding it single to do the stripes in between and to do my uh, band. It's not a button band, it's just a open cardigan. And I also held it uh, fingering double uh, with mohair. So there is a mohair in this one that kind of matches. And then I held, um, I also held the ribbing the black stripes and the band here with a black mohair as well. So the mohair just adds that extra coziness. So I really love it. Simple hug, that's what it's called. The simple hug. And then the brioche one is called the brioche hug. I got it, I got it. Cozy up knits, go check them out. I love this card again. I've always wanted to redo it again. Um, in a long sleeve version because I always run cold. Um, so that would, I thought that would be really nice. I just haven't gotten around it, to it yet. Um, but I think that it would be wonderful as well. And it'd be easy to, easy to add the long sleeves to it. So I really love this one. Go check it out. It is an awesome one. And so is the brioche one. I love that one too. So yeah, that is what I am wearing. I will have that link below. So let's get on into finished objects. So I'm gonna start off with the, the pair of socks that kind of kicked me back into my knitting mojo. So like I said, I was kind of dealing with, you know, life stuff, winter blues and that, and I just needed something bright and something fun. And I had, I had been eyeing the skein in my stash for a while. Me and my friend Agile had each bought a skein of this to have matchy socks, and she did cast these on with me. Um, I'm just gonna grab the tag here. So here is the socks, first of all. Aren't they gorgeous? So this is Rose Hill Yarns Fingering Weight. And I'll just quickly give you the details. So Rose Hill Yarns. And this one is her fingering weight. Uh, it is a 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon. And it is 463 yards for your main color. And then it also came with the green. And that is a 20 gram mini skein and it is in the sock set called Blooming. We had picked this up, I believe, last spring or around that time, maybe this past summer. I can't remember now, but I believe it was one of her spring colorways from last spring. So I don't know if it's still available, but if it is, I would highly recommend it because it is just so gorgeous. It is definitely spring-like and yeah I just really enjoyed these so I didn't want to do I didn't know quite how it was going to work up so I just decided to do a vanilla sock and that's what Angel has done as well and yeah they are perfect 
I cast it on 64 stitches and Angel had suggested we try, um, I think it's a, yeah, a two, knit two pearl one ribbing, which I've never done before and I really like it. It's actually really pretty. So I might be doing that again in a future project, like sock project. Um, so I use the contrast for my cuff and for my toes. Uh, I just did 64 stitches, decreased down to my normal 56 to make the leg and the foot tighter. Slip stitch, heel flap and gusset, just because that fits me best. And they are so, so wonderful. I cannot be more happy with these ones. So this really kicked me back into my knitting and yeah, it just makes me so happy. It's a very beautiful colorway. You really got to check out Robin of Rose Hill. She is a Canadian indie dyer from Alberta and all of her colorways are just impeccable. I love them. I have to be very careful going on Instagram and seeing all the pretty yarns cause yeah, it makes me want them all. So that was the first one. The second finished object uh, is another pair of socks. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I finally finished my Rhineback Rumi socks. I casted these on on J June 7th of last year and I finished them like a couple days ago. <laughs> That's actually really pathetic, <laughs> but it happened. Uh, this is Northern Pearl uh, yarn that I had picked up several years ago and I don't know it just really reminded me of Easter and so I had pulled these out around Easter and I had the first sock I think was to about here so I think I had the leg done so I just got to work on these I decided it was high time to get them done I love the yarn I love the pattern the Rhineback Rumi's pattern is by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady Designs. It is a wonderful pattern. It is a four row repeat. It's kind of like this uh, ribbed texture. And it, they are so amazing. They are addicting to knit up and they just feel so squishy, especially with uh, Azel's yarn because it's a plumper, it's a plumper fingering and it's just, Oh, it's luxurious, guys. Um, so yeah, I finally finished those. Another pair of socks that have made me so happy. I kind of got discouraged a little bit and I almost put them back uh, away um, because when I, I use Knit Companion, if you haven't heard of Knit Companion, it is a mobile app that you can put on your phone or your tablet or your I believe your computer too. Uh, you can get it through Android or Apple. And um, you can, if you download uh, patter, PDF patterns, either from Ravelry or wherever on the internet, you can track it. It's got little highlighter markers that you can move up and down. It's got these counters, row counters, and that on the side that you can uh, input how many rows you're on. It's wonderful. There's, uh, it's a great way to keep up on charts. You can subscribe. I can't remember. It's a free service, but there is an option to upgrade. I don't remember how much it is. I use the free version cause I'm not, I don't use it for much more, but there's so many features to the knit companion app. I am not really one to knit from a piece of paper anymore. Once I learned of Knit Companion, I just use that because it's easier to look on my phone or my tablet and follow the pattern. Um, but yeah, check it out. Knit Companion is pretty awesome. But um, you can also keep notes within the pattern that you're working on. And all that to say, <laughs> I had put in 14 repeats. And when I looked to do the second sock, I thought that I meant for the ribbing. No, I did 20 rows for the ribbing and 14 repeats of the pattern for the leg. So I had to rip the second sock back to the ribbing to get the correct amounts of ribbing in and then redo it. So I had gotten all the way down to the heel on the second sock before I realized that, but it's okay. I frogged it back, 
grabbed a glass of wine that night and I just stuck to it. I really wanted just to cast them aside and cast on new socks and I didn't do it. So I'm pretty proud of myself because now I have a brand new pair of socks that are gorgeous and they are finished. So, and I don't know why I had set these aside so long. I think it was just because of the move and new shiny things, hard to say, but they are now done. It should not have taken almost a year to finish them. <laughs> so Rhineback Roomies, Crazy Sock Lady Designs, go check it out. Okay, I'm gonna grab another couple sips of my coffee while it's still warm. And I have one, no, two more uh, finished objects. Okay, so I will start with this one. So I had a request um, to do a little bralette and I have had my eyes set on Jessie Mae designs for quite a while. She has a lot of amazing patterns and a lot of them are like crop tops and bralettes and stuff like that. It's just not something I'm sure that I would want to wear. Um, but after knitting this one up, I, I might actually give it a try. So I had the framework, framework bralette in my Revelry uh, library. And once I showed uh, the recipient the bralette, she wanted it. So I did all the measurements. This is an amazing pattern. It is written from, I'm just gonna grab my show notes. It is written from extra small up to a 5X. It uses a DK to a worsted weight yarn. So depending on your size, it uses between 150 yards to 660 yards of a DK or a worsted, depending on your size. So that's not too bad. So again, this is the Framework Bralette by Jessie Made Designs. So it is completed. I just haven't woven in my ends yet, but here it is. And it still has to be blocked too. That's why it's a little, a little wonky in the, the strap area. But here it is. And it is really, really cute. I like it. So it's a really cool pattern, like I was saying, because it gives you all sorts of information. So it shows you how you should do your measurements, where you should do your measurements. She gives you um, like a, a sheet where you can input all your numbers and how to incorporate that into the pattern to get your correct size. So I am not one to really, I'm not one to gauge swatch at all. Um, I did for this. I measured like I was supposed to. I literally followed everything in the pattern. Uh, we were trying it on as we went. I was using the barber cords to do that because it's most easy. I don't think I have ever put this much work <laughs> into a top, but it is worth it because it fits her really well. So it's you start at the bottom, you do the ribbing and you can adjust the ribbing. You could follow what's in the pattern or do it a bit longer. I believe I did just a little bit longer cause she wanted it a little bit longer. Um, you, uh, I believe until you work up to a certain point, it is reverse stockinette. So you do have the pearl side sticking out and it's got these beautiful slip stitch details. And that is also on the back as well. So the back and the front are pretty much the same. I don't really think that there's much of a, much of a difference because it's knitted the same. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. The only thing I had to adjust mm -hmm. was I did a large for her, her measurements. Um, 
her measurements were kind of in between. So it says that if you're in between, it would be better to size down. So that's kind of what I did. Um, and it fits her perfectly. The only thing is she has a fuller bust. So you, the way that the pattern is written, you can follow uh, the decreases. So once you get to this point here to do the top of the cups, you can follow the decreases in the pattern to do the, the straps. Or she gives you options in the pattern to do a slower rate of decrease, which would give you more of a V-neck, which is what I have done here. Um, that's because she has a fuller breast area, so she needed a slower rate of decrease to, to make it work. So that's what we did, and I really love that that was in the pattern. And the only thing that she has asked me to do is because it did create more of a V-neck. She asked if I could just like sew this up just a little bit so it's not so open. And I will do that once I get it washed and blocked. I will do that for her. So we have one more try on to do. Um, this It gives you directions uh, how long to do your strap area. Um, I had to modify that because we did such, uh, we did the slower rate of decrease. Your decreases do come up into your strap area. I did have to do some modifications to make her straps a little bit shorter. That is why it is, if you're going to do one of these, I think it's best that you keep trying on as you go. That way you don't sew in all your ends and get to the end and it doesn't fit right. Um, this is a garment that you want to fit right. So yeah, I did have to uh, take the straps back out a little bit, but so far it's fitting her quite well. We have, like I said, we have one more try on to do, but I think it's pretty much good to go. So all I have to do is wash it, block it, and just seam that up for her and it's good to go. It is a really great pattern and I'm so glad that I got to knit one. I really liked it. The yarn that I use for this is Cascade Ultra Pima Cotton and I will have to put the name across here. It's like a pretty plummy purple. She loves purple. It's wonderful. I like it. They are quite popular. I'm sure it's it's no surprise. They, they're quite popular patterns. So this one is the framework um, they also have uh, a ripple one, so it's just ribbing. They don't offer a ton of support that is noted in the pattern, but they are very comfortable for around the house or however you wish to wear them. So that was a fun project. So yeah, that is the framework. So I got that one finished and then my last finished object that I have to share with you is another uh, hat. This is another children's hat um, that I did for the Hats for Hope charity. And it's just a basic uh, beanie. I just cast it on. I think I cast on 74 stitches for a child size. 4.5 millimeter needle. It is a worsted weight acrylic. I believe I brought the tag with me. And then I just do plain stockinette for seven and a half inches and then do my decreases. Nothing fancy. It's, it's just a simple pattern that I always keep on the back of my chair. That way if we go somewhere uh, in the vehicle or go to Timmy's for a coffee. It's just something that is easy to to knit on and chat. So I'm using Loops and Threads uh, yarn. This is something that I pick up from Michael's and it is in color number 35010 and I think it's called bright blue. It is bright blue. <laughs> there it is. It is a worsted weight acrylic. 
and I really, really love it because it is Tweety and it's got all these color, color pops in it. It's just so pretty. So this roughly used, I think I noted 40, 45 or 46 grams of yarn. So I'm almost wondering if I have enough of the yarn left to do another hat or maybe make a toddler size hat um, to make sure I don't run out of yarn. I'm not sure yet. I'm just setting my, my scraps aside, but I really enjoyed this one too. So no pattern for this one, but there are lots of basic knitted beanies that you can find. Um, I might have linked a couple of them in my last episode. I can't remember, but just a simple beanie, not really much to note on, but it is a finished object. I'm going to grab a, another quick sip of coffee and I guess we will move on into works in progress. I have a couple of those. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm just going to grab my bags quickly. So I guess because I just showed you guys the hat, I should show you the next one that I have cast it on. You know what, guys, I fibbed about the yarn. The yarn that I just showed you, it is loops and threads yarn, but it is not the bright blue colorway. I just realized that um, it is loops and threads. It's a t one of their tweed ones. Can't believe I just did that. I'm pulling out this project and I realized this yarn matches this yarn label. I told you guys it was gonna be one of those days. So this is loops and threads. It is it is part of the impeccable uh, line, impeccable acrylic in the bright blue colorway. <laughs> it is really, really pretty. It's got a nice halo. It's super soft for an acrylic and it's kind of like a, a marl. It's very beautiful. So I'm going to put this yarn tag in the bag so I don't mess up again, but I just casted this one on last night. I got the ribbing started, so not too, too much to note, but I just doing, again, um, just it's going to be a plain vanilla hat. So I cast it on 74 stitches, 4.5 millimeter. I like to do a two by two rib because I like the look of it. And I think I did something like 18 rows of ribbing. And now I'm going to start doing the, the plain vanilla portion of the hat. So yeah, there's that one. So that's the first works in progress. The second one that I have is another sop. And the last episode, um, I had showed you guys that I won the Dana Ray Makes uh, giveaway for her Lucky Cable Sock uh, pattern. And I also won a work sock bundle from Timber Yarns. So I told you guys, I was pretty sure I was going to cast it on and I did, I think almost right away too. So I'll first show you the, the label. So this is Timber Yarns Work Sock Bundle DK. It is a DK sock set. So the main skein comes with 110 grams, which is this gorgeous one right here. I chose the red bundle. She has multiple uh, colorways. Uh, they all have the black marl in it, which I absolutely adore. So that's the main skein. Then you get a 40 gram mini skein of white. That is to do your contrast, number one. And then you get a 10 gram of... Sorry, that was the cable needle going south. Uh, then you get a 10 gram of a contrast number two and mine is the black which is black with the gray marl in it i hope that wasn't too loud so i casted it on i am doing the lucky cable sock uh from dana ray makes and oh my god guys it is wonderful 
I love doing cables and lately I haven't really been able to focus enough and this cable pattern is just delightful. It is very beginner friendly. If you like cables and are just starting, I would highly recommend this pattern. It is a 10 row repeat, but out of those 10 rows, you're only doing one row of cables and it is a simple, simple cable. So here is the top. It's got that beautiful work sock look. And then you have this beautiful cable that is running down the front of the sock. I don't know how well it's gonna show up, but it also runs down the back as well. So hopefully you guys can make that out a little bit. It's a little hard with the yarn. I did the contrast uh, slip stitch heel flap and gusset in white. And now I am on to the foot of the sock and the cable pattern is continuing down the front of the sock and the, the bottom is just vanilla. Now I'm trying to eat my, my cord. <laughs> so this is still sock one. I am really, really enjoying it. It does knit up really quickly and it's perfect. So again, cables, this is very beginner friendly to me. If you are, you know, the basic concepts of a sock and would like to try cables, highly recommend the Lucky Cable Sock. It is just divine. I love it. And I can't wait to wear these socks. So I will be probably focusing on these to get them finished so I can wear them before the real warm weather really starts to kick in because they are just fabulous and I love the colors. So again, Dana, if you're watching, thank you so much for hosting the giveaway. I really love it and the pattern is just awesome. So thank you. So go check that out. I will have that linked below. So that is my second work in progress. And to be quite honest, that's all I've really been working on. I have my socks on the go. I have a hat always on the go. Um, the only other thing that I've really been focusing on is my crochet blanket. So that's what I'm going to show you guys next. I want to cast on all the things. I have another pair of socks. Uh, I have the yarn already caked up to go for those. Just something simple and mindless. Um, I want to try to pull out another, um, like, whip to get them worked down. I just haven't been able to focus on it yet, but we will see. We don't know what's going to happen or what I might decide to work on next. But for right now, it's just socks, hat knitting, and my blanket. So the last time I shared my crochet blanket, it is a crocheted granny stripe. I am not following any particular pattern for this. So I just set this up here. The last time I shared it, I was right here at that little sheepy. And I've managed to put in that much of my magic ball. So not a lot for a month, but it's it's enough. <laughs> I've just been picking it up at night or in the morning uh, just to get a few rows put on it. And it's a great relaxation thing for me. It is just wonderful. So I will just try to show you the rest of the blanket here. It is just so lovely. It makes me so happy. It's another one of those projects that it's just bringing me so much joy right now. I really, really love it. It is throw size. Um, I honestly don't know how long I want to go with it yet. I think I want it to be able to cover my feet and something to curl up in as I'm watching TV and that in my chair. But we'll just see where it goes. Um, 
right now I am still working on the second magic ball that I had created or magic cake. So I decided to try the magic uh, loop, um, magic knot method. And this is my second cake that I have made. I think this one was roughly around 240 grams of fingering weight yarn. It's just fingering held single. So I am, I still got a good chunk of this left. So we'll see where this takes me. And if it's long enough, then I will just finish the blanket off. But if not, I will make another one. We'll see. So yeah, that is what I am currently working with. And I was using a Knit Picks uh, crochet hook. They are one of my favorites. Um, but I've been watching uh, Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast, and she's been saying how she uses uh, the Tulip Etimo crochet hooks to crochet wi with, and she absolutely loves them. So I had to give them a try. Uh, so I went on to Amazon and I ended up finding um, I ended up finding one. There is a pink set. It they're they're called Tulip Etimos. They're I think they were twenty two dollars Canadian, but they are not the Tulip brand. They are a knockoff brand. So do read the description, people's comments, and that. Um, Cause I almost bought the whole set, and then I was like, "Oh, wait a minute, that's not." It's just a knockoff brand. So this is a Tulip Atimo. I got the red one. I just got the one size for my blanket. And I really, really love it. It's got the rubber handle and the metal is almost like a matte finish. It feels really nice. It's kind of got this indentation here for your, um, I hold my crochet hook like this. So it's got that indentation for you to put your, your thumb in. I really, really like it. Um, it's very lightweight. I've kind of been calling this the Chagu of crochet hooks. <laughs> it just feels really, really nice. So I'm not going to go out and buy a whole set yet. I think you can get a whole set of the Atimos for, I think on Amazon, it was like a hundred and some dollars. I'm not going to go crazy like that right now because I honestly don't crochet that much, but I, if I did want another size, I would probably purchase this again. I really, really like them. So I can see what all the buzz is about, I suppose. So if you like a crochet hook that has a rubber handle, if you have arthritis, like I got arthritis in my hands in that, this is really, really awesome because it is so lightweight. The Knit Picks ones are lightweight as well. I also love the Susan Bates ones. Uh, they don't have the rubber on them. They're just metal. Um, I really love those as well, but I really like the fact that these are lightweight. Not by much, but enough. It does make a difference. So I've been using that and I really like it. So I thought I would share that with you if you have problems with your hands as well. So yeah, that is my blanket. I really love it. It's it's to the point now that if I am watching TV, I, I always put my feet up and it's actually like covering my feet and my legs as I'm working on it. And so I get to enjoy the coziness of it as I'm working on it. So it's pretty awesome. And I'm absolutely loving it. I think when this one is done, I will probably cast another one on because I have a lot of little scraps and I think it's a great way to, um, to work them up into a beautiful blanket. Although I do have other scrappy blankets on the go, but this one I enjoyed the most. I think I cast it on close to 300 stitches. Um, fingering weight like I said held single and you just do the granny stitch back and forth that's all it is so mindless so easy it's wonderful so yeah that's what that one is I know that there are patterns uh for a granny stripe blanket I'm sure that you can find lots of uh 
ideas uh, online. There's, I'm sure there's free patterns. If you follow uh, Crazy Sock Lady, I think she even links a pattern um, that you can follow. So yeah, it's really awesome. I love it. I love scrappy blankets. So yeah, that is it for the knitting content. That is all I have been working on. So I guess I will go on into just checking my show notes here to make sure I didn't forget anything. I guess I will now go on into um, my yardage in and my yardage out. So I did really, really well um, for the month of March. I felt like I had failed miserably because it felt like I had done literally no knitting at all. So I'm just going to grab my book here. So I'm just uh, keeping all my notes in this little journal. And each month I just mark if I bring a skein of yarn into my stash, then I mark it in the book and anything that I finish, whether it was a whip from a year ago, like the socks or um, my blanket, I mark the yardage for um, my first magic knot ball and I marked that in for my yardage, uh, I think for February. So when I made this magic knot ball for my crochet blanket, I noted the yardage, um, the grams of the ball. So whenever I put that ball into my blanket, whenever it happens, then I will mark that yardage out for that month. I'm not being too picky about it. It's just, it's just a thing to look on each month. It kind of, it kind of inspires you to, uh, to knit from stash. Um, I don't know. It keeps you going, I guess. I think it's really cool. It's my first time doing it and I'm, I am a fan. Um, so for the month of March, um, just go over here. I only had one skein of yarn come into my stash and it was pretty awesome because I didn't purchase it. It was the Timber Yarns Work Sock Bundle that I won, um, but I still counted it as yarn into my stash, even though I didn't purchase it. So it was 160, <coughs> excuse me, 160 grams of yarn that came into my stash in March. And I had a total of 384 grams of yarn that went out of my stash. So I completed five things in the month of March. I'm going to grab a sip of coffee. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's not too bad. I felt like I didn't have too much, but five things is pretty good. And at least I had more grams out than I had in. So that makes me pretty happy. The reason why also I am trapping, uh, tracking grams and not yards, it's just easier. I believe Kay is doing the same thing as well. Most skeins of yarn that you get, um, whether it is from a retail store or it's indie dye, they always mark the grams of the yarn. And I also have a kitchen scale and it does grams. So when I finish a project, so my hat or a pair of socks, um, I just put it on my kitchen scale and I get the grams from it. And that's what I'm marking in my book here. It's just easier than converting the grams to yardage and all that jazz. So it's just a rough thing for me to look on so it doesn't bother me. So that's why I'm tracking grams, not yards. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. That was for the month of March. So far for the month of April, um, I'm doing pretty awesome. I haven't bought no yarn yet. I don't have plans to buy yarn for the month. So hopefully that stays to be true. Um, but so far for this month, I've already had 317 grams come out of my stash. So I'm doing pretty good. I think I'm making up for my lack of knitting in March. So yeah, that, that makes me happy. So again, it's just a cool little thing to, uh, to note and 
look upon to keep you inspired. I do have a lot of yarn and as I've said before, this is, it does not mean I'm not going to purchase yarn because that will that'll never happen. I have to purchase yarn. That is my treat to myself and it is my thing. That is what I do. But I'm also trying to be a little bit more mindful when I do bring yarn into my stash. Um, and I'm trying to knit the beautiful skeins that I do have because I love them. They're beautiful and I don't want them just to sit. So it helps motivate me to continue to continue getting stuff out of my stash as well. So yeah, I saw Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady do it and I thought it was pretty fun to look back upon. So at the end of the year, it'd be really nice. I think I would like to tally up each of the months um, the yarn that came in and the yarn that went out just to see what how well I did and I will probably continue doing that uh, probably I'm, I'm surprised I've kept up with it this long so we will see so yeah that is pretty much it guys um, I haven't done too too much else like I said it's my knitting mojo kind of left me, but it's coming back. So we will see what happens for the month of April. Um, I really want to get back into garment knitting. I really, really miss it. Especially when you you wear a knitted garment. They are just like so amazing. So we will see. I've, I really want to get back to that as well. I just need the mind frame for it right now. So yeah. I will let you guys go instead of rambling on here. I hope you guys are having an amazing week and I hope the weather is nice where you are. We have a couple days of rain coming in, so I probably am gonna go outside if it's not too cold. Uh, it's nice and sunny, but where we live, we kind of live in a wind tunnel, so it's pretty breezy. Um, so we'll see. I can't handle the cold too well, but I hope it's warm enough that I can sit out there because the sun looks glorious. Oh, yesterday was the, the solar eclipse. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, so here in New Brunswick, where I am, it roughly started between four and five o'clock. And um, we were just, we were out for the afternoon and we were just getting home as it had started. And it was something else to see. It was a bright sunny day. We were very lucky. It was clear skies all day. And um, it was something else to see everything starting to go dark. We didn't have a total eclipse here. Like it didn't go black as night. Um, so we quickly unloaded and uh, we didn't have the, the cool glasses that you uh, can wear to see the eclipse, but we do have uh, welding shields. So we put on our welding shields and we just sat on the patio and we just watched it. And it was pretty, pretty incredible. Even it was, even though it wasn't a total eclipse, it was, it was pretty cool. It kind of, um, it pretty much overshadowed except it left almost like a thumbnail like a then it went into a crescent moon and then eventually it dissipated but it was it was incredible i know people uh family in ontario um it actually went dark it was around 11 a.m in the morning and it actually went dark there so that is pretty incredible i love i love anything to do with um like space and all that, all that stuff that just intrigues me so much. So that was pretty cool to experience. I experienced an eclipse, a partial eclipse when I was a kid. I think I was like in elementary school. Um, I just remembered they had papered up all the windows and the doors and um, we weren't allowed to go out during that period. And uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty, pretty cool. So now to experience it as an adult, it was even more awesome because this time I actually got to see it. So that was a pretty incredible thing that happened yesterday. Um, and I got to sit by, um, not directly on a beach, but, uh, we were out running errands and one of the places that we had uh, stopped at, 
um, there was a beach just at the end of the road and um, I don't think that you could have gotten onto the beach from the road so I didn't venture down uh, down there but I just sat there I we had picked up uh, Timmy's coffee beforehand so I just sat there um, watched the water it was just that's my jazz I love the ocean so that's another reason I'm happy to be back here in the Maritimes because I love the water so that was pretty cool so overall yesterday was a pretty amazing day and I worked on my hat too so that was pretty cool so yeah sidetrack <laughs> but yeah I hope you guys have an amazing week ahead of you like I said, I'm going to take the rest of my coffee and pick a project and see if I can enjoy some of this glorious sunshine. So as I said, all the description notes, um, all the notes will be in the description box below and I will hopefully see you guys in two weeks instead of a month. So until then, take good care and happy knitting. Bye.